lots of people think this is a relatively new technology, and in its current form it is. It has roots that go all the way back to uh, World War II, uh, developed by the British uh, to basically counteract or be able to deal with barrage balloons and cable strikes to Calumet, Kill Frost, and Sheetbridge Stokes. That were the three companies that were originally formulated or put together uh, to develop this product. The initial product was a liquid system, very, very crude. You still see it in places. Uh, uh, as an example, about 10 years ago at Oshkosh, there was an old um, uh, Avro uh, Shackleton there that had the original TKS system on it. And it's just a simple little strip system. You'll see typically like two or three strips on the leading edge. Same technology, much cruder than this. As In essence, what's happened over the last 40 to 50 years is it's been refined and evolved, eventually down to what you see now, to what our porous material is, laser drilled titanium, and we pump a glycol solution out of that particular application, and, and that's what protects the wing. It's a true anti-ice system, so it keeps ice from ever forming on the plane. And probably the greatest advantage over any other technology that's out there is it's an all-covering system in that the key element, both in its design and its operation, is its runback effect. We pump this fluid from the leading edge of the wing, but we rely on the fluid running back over the surfaces that we're protecting. So any place that fluid, water can contact the airframe, it will protect. So it can deal with any kind of ice from typical cold rime ice to relatively uh, you know, difficult uh, freezing drizzle, freezing rain. From an operational standpoint, it's a very, very low power system. A typical 28 volt uh, system will draw an amp and a half, and that's all. Where if, and when you get into an electrical, even a, a hot prop, a hot prop's drawing probably what, like 10, 15 amps, something like that all the time. And it's cycling, it's not doing the whole thing. You're getting entire airframe coverage for an amp and a half. Uh, there's not many aircraft left in the GA world that we don't have something on, and we're going after those that, you know, that we can. All told, we probably have, just off the top of my head, I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of about, not counting the jets, the Hawkers, the S2s, around um, at least 3,000 airplanes covered right now. Our newest versions coming out in known ice, we're seeing some, uh, some uh, methodology changes on how we run them. We're starting to use the system to tackle much tougher icing conditions for true emergency cases when you run into very, very severe icing. We think there's potential to really optimize our fluid quantity in the sense that be able to take our fluid quantity down because basically have a two or a three speed system now so there's, there's gradations of, of what we can deal with perfectly and everything else is either too low or it's a waste. What we want to be able to do is very the speed or the rate at which we pump fluid out to a specific icing condition. So we think with that and a little bit of a statistical analysis, we can come up with a pretty good argument uh, with the FAA that if we're sitting here tuning to this all the time, you know, for your typical flights, it'll take less fluid to protect an airplane, but you still have the high horsepower there when you need it when a, when a severe uh, condition comes up. With just a, a slight bit of experience with this system, what you find is a little touch of anticipation with TKS goes a long way. Like you're climbing up, a layer's coming up, you're descending, all the conditions are right. You turn it on and you focus on, on what you need to, flying the airplane. That's the whole point of TKS. It allows you to focus on what you need to focus on with a little bit of monitoring to say, yeah, everything's good.